Okay, so yesterday I went to several locations and filmed videos with the Microsoft Lumia 950 XL. Unfortunately, I discovered that these videos all had issues with the stabilization and even the sharpness. So for this one, so I took them out to a track to just test two camera applications. The first one, which I'm using right now, would be ProShot. And then for the second one, I'm going to use the stock Microsoft camera application and just see how they fare. So I can say that the Lumia 950 XL and the 1520 that I've been used to, they're two completely different beasts. Like, I had high expectations of the 950 XL as being superior in every other way, but it turns out that it is going to be a rather steep learning curve with getting this thing to just perform the way I would like to. And the reason why this is so is because of the hardware. The 1520, well first things first, it was a larger screen so you had a little bit more that you could squeeze into the frame but more importantly is that it actually had capacitive buttons so it was actually a lot easier to just navigate the phone with this one the screen is apparently nowhere near as sensitive as the 1520 was so what that means is that if you don't have a really good stylus or really conductive gloves you're gonna have to be poking at this thing pretty hard or firmly I guess I should say to get it to work whereas with the 1520 all you'd have to do is just tap the capacitive button and boom you could just close it you could go home you could just navigate a lot more easily but this one now I'm not sure if there is a way to adjust the screen sensitivity I hope there is I should look into that because I mean I was aware of the fact that the screen wasn't going to be as sensitive but at the same time I did not expect it to require such a firm touch just to get to navigate and you can see why that would be a problem when you're trying to outdoors especially when it is winter because you don't want to be pulling off your gloves when it's below zero just to try and navigate your screen that's a serious pain and what else didn't I address yet so okay I've addressed the capacitive issue and I think for the next test I'm not sure if I'll turn off stabilization see that makes a difference actually no I think after I test the stock Microsoft camera application I'll probably test it again going across the field rather than walking on the gravel but first I want to get up to there again and then I'll test that again oh yes yes and I, now I remember now I, I forgot to mention the sound issue on 1520 you did not have a microphone right on the bottom bezel they were all on the back so what that means is that the sounds that are happening right in front of the camera they're not going to pick up quite as easy now that can be a good thing depending on what you're doing but if you're outdoors and if you're like breathing heavily or whatever you have something loose and flapping then that's quite an issue and that's another thing I noticed with the 950XL that while I was filming with it that it did pick up too many sounds that I did not really want to have in a video like I'm not sure if I was hearing like the sounds of my jacket or the zipper flapping or whatever and that's not exactly desirable but on the flip side though at least it does allow me to have my voice heard and picked up a lot easier so okay I've not reached this point again, so I'm going to stop recording.
And I'll switch to the Microsoft application. All right, so now I'm using the stock Microsoft Cam application. Now, if you remember why I avoided this on a 1520 in the first place, it was because it was it had this very severe bug where it would where you could like be recording for 10 minutes, and then by the time you stop recording, you'd only like save a couple of seconds, maybe a couple of minutes. So that's why I avoided it like the plague. Now, with the 950 XL being further upgraded, and then I think it also has a ability to restart certain applications or like reset them or whatever if they misbehave so I guess it should be safe to use but the reason why I haven't been using it in the first place is because of that bad taste left in my mouth with the earlier Microsoft boot. So I don't know maybe it is safer to use on your handsets again I haven't tested it extensively though right now I'm testing it to see if the stabilization will be better. So far from what I'm seeing it does not look noticeably better in terms of stabilization. Like it still kind of looks like it's just wobbling and just jostling. So I don't know. I'll walk across the field again, maybe with the stabilization off, and see if that will make a difference. I did plan to also do a test where I take my gloves off to see if it wouldn't pick up my glove sound. I mean, I'm not even sure what's picking those up in the first place, but with it being minus two Celsius, I think I will not actually do that. Because my hands are cold with my gloves on, so they'll be freezing if I take them off and I don't feel like freezing my fingers today. I do remember about two or three years ago where I was testing a phone, but it was at a Bowmanville High School's track. I'm not 100% sure if it was a 1520 the Passport or even the Q10. It was one of them. You can go back and look. We'll probably put the name up on the edit. Not that it really matters. Think that these tracks are a good way to test the stabilization, but I'm not liking the way this thing is looking so far. It still looks kind of shaky, so perhaps if I turn off the digital stabilization, maybe it'll make a difference. I'm not sure, but when I get back up there, I will find out what the case is. But no, seriously though, why does it shake like that? And this is a brand new phone too, it wasn't previously used either, so I know that's not the problem. I'm trying to hold this thing as friendly as I can. Yes, they're probably invest in a gimbal or something if I really wanted to keep it super still. But then the problem with that is that you will not get as much flexibility as you would if you're using your hands. Of course, the ultimate solution would be just use something different altogether. But why would I have to do that if I could just find a way to make this work? A lot better. And it looks like the trains are awfully quiet today. Oh yeah, that's right. Of course the trains are gonna be quiet because of that outbreak, so they're not going to be running as frequently as they should. Or at least that's what I heard. Okay, so that was a Microsoft application. Yeah, really quiet trains. Okay, we are not exactly in the center yet. So, okay. Now, let's stop it here. Doesn't even look like the resolution is super sharp. 
I'm tapping and it's not. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that too. I have to be careful about because when you tap this thing again with the microphone being in the front, it just picks up everything so much. Okay, so this time, again, I'm using the stock Microsoft application, but rather than walking around the entire track again, I'm just gonna walk straight through the fields to see if that makes it better. Okay, honestly, I don't think this is gonna make a difference if anything. It looks like it might just actually be worse, maybe? I don't know. So this is without stabilization and yes actually it does look like it's worse it looks like it's shaking far more then because I'm walking through grass that seems to just have made it even worse should I test the pro shot application without stabilization probably not it's gonna have very close if not identical results so I don't think I'm going to be terribly bothered with testing that one with its stabilization off instead what I might consider is just honestly I, I do not even know depending on what the results look like I may have to consider just using this thing only as a standstill device if the stabilization is bad with all the modes and with all the settings so I mean I would hate to have to put it in that position but at the end of the day I would rather not have my videos look like absolute jello so okay that was the end of the field now I'm gonna come again and see how it will look this time going to the right side of the track. I don't expect it to look any better, but you never know. Maybe if the pavement is somewhat more stable, it should make it better. I do not know. Okay, I'm not sure if that is supposed to like be a garden or seats. But let's just say that it looks... Actually, let me take a closer look at that. What is that? Uh, no, that's none, actually. That's ne neither a garden or seeds. It is just wooden barriers. That's what it is. Okay, I wasn't really watching my steps with this thing. I have to be careful now. But if I have to give you an early verdict, I would say that the digital stabilization is better left on than off. You know, why don't I get a close up for some of those cattails? If it's not too swampy. No, it's not too swampy. It looks alright. I mean, you can tell from here that the fields are still pretty swampy because everything is just thawing out. I believe spring this year starts on the 19th of March, so I can explain why it was just these on so much. Well, actually, you know, even when spring does come, it doesn't necessarily automatically warm as fast as it should. Sometimes it will, sometimes it will not. Okay, these look like animal prints. I don't know if these are like dog prints or raccoon prints. I'm gonna probably go with dog prints because I would imagine somebody walking their dog here. I don't think there's a lot of wildlife around here. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. So, okay. Let's stop it here now. Oh, 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 oh.